was wearing this 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 uh, invisible spiritual scarlet D, a divorced Christian, and I had been thinking for months now, I'm ruined. I'm a divorced Christian. God can never use me ever again. I've lost my whole witness for God. How did I, how did this happen to me? How did this happen to me? Honestly, I used to look down on divorced Christians until I became one. Hi, my name is Michael Criswell with Relentless Heart, and if you're a subscriber, you already know that, but I suspect this video will be viewed by more people than just those who are already subscribed. I want to speak on the topic of Christians and divorce. Recently, I received a plea from one of my subscribers who really felt that there were a lot of Christians who were under a tremendous amount of condemnation and that there was a great deal of ignorance on God's true word as it relates to this subject of divorce and remarriage. I have a great deal of respect for a particular uh, teacher in India named Zach Poonin. He's an incredible Bible teacher. Um, I've been truly blessed to follow his teachings over the last couple of years. And um, I really respected something that Zach said about divorce. You know, in the culture of India, divorce is, is, is frowned upon greatly, and as it should be by all God-fearing people. Albeit there's a different reason why they look down on divorce than what God's Word would have us look down on divorce for is. But Zach said something that really struck me. He said, you know, I cannot speak very much on this subject because it's not something that I actually have personal experience with. I say praise be to God for that. I really wish that I didn't have personal experience with this subject, but unfortunately I do. There's a lot of things in my life I wish I couldn't speak to you about from personal experience. But I can tell you that I've come to know my father in tremendous ways and I've learned his heart and I've studied his word for thousands and thousands of hours and I've discovered his heart on so many things and I found out that the father thinks very differently about many things than what I had originally been told or thought. And I also have discovered that the father really cherishes the broken. He cherishes those who have been beat down those who have been rejected, those who have been despised, those who've been thrown away, those who are weak, and those who, like me, have failed over and over again. I kind of see the purpose of my life and my mission to help people to learn from my past failures and the mistakes that God has helped me to see, uh, both how wrong it was for me to do, what my role was in it, and how He sees it, and ultimately how He redeemed it all. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. My life is a daily, living, breathing testimony of God's faithfulness. No matter how much dirt that I've been able to throw God's way, no matter how much ignorance I've walked in in my life, no matter what anybody else has been able to do to me or what I've done to myself, I have seen the Bible come to life in my experience. The life I live seems to operate in exact accordance with these scriptural principles that were written anywhere between 4,000 and 2,000 years ago. If people ask me today why I believe the Bible, I'll say because it changed who I am and it is the manual by which I operate my life on a daily basis and I see the very principles in scripture in play in my life on a daily basis not to mention the incredible relationship that I enjoy with the Father. So I want to speak to you again from my experience on this, and I want to share some experiences first, but I don't want you to lean on my experience. I am going to bring the Word of God into this, but I want to bring some practicality to it. And I want to share with you, just from my heart, some of the things that the Father has taught me about how He sees divorce and remarriage in ways that were not in alignment with what I had been taught for many years sitting in church. You know, there's a great problem with legalism. The Pharisees, as you know, knew all of the scriptures. They knew all of the law of Moses and the prophets, and they were the first people that Jesus Christ really ridiculed and condemned. He really didn't hold anything back with the Pharisees. You could almost say that Jesus literally hated them. And there's a spirit of that today in the church. There's also a spirit of hyper grace, the other side where everything goes and God's grace is a license for you and I to continue to sin. And then there's this legalism side where it's all about following rules and it's about trying to keep this perfectionistic appearance on the outside that there's godliness. There's a knowledge of the scriptures, but there's really no knowledge of God and there's no love. It's not based in who the spirit of God is. 
legalism on one extreme, hyper grace on the other. The sweet spot is right in the middle. And so I want to share with you how I believe I found that with God's help. Thanks be to God. And I can tell you that divorce, and if you've been through it, you know, I think it's the most painful thing you can go through on this planet. The two D's, death and divorce. I think death is easier because death isn't something that you could have any role to play. And many times it happens outside of your ability to control in any way. And it comes to us all. That's not the, tr it's not the case with divorce. Divorce can be unbelievably painful. It can be like protracted death, just on and on and on. So I've had this experience and I know how painful divorce can be. But I also know how painful the condemnation from a legalistic understanding of divorce can be. And I know how painful and frustrating it can be to not know the truth about how God fully sees divorce. So I want to just share with you from my own experience kind of what happened, the, the brief version. You know, the Bible says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather to expose them. And so I may have to share a little bit about my ex-wife in this. And I don't keep records of wrongs, but I don't hold any bones about calling out what the devil has done in my life. I don't blame my ex-wife at all. Um, you don't have an enemy that wears flesh and blood, and neither do I. Our real enemy is the God of this world, Satan. And he simply uses people that make themselves available through ignorance, disobedience, or unbelief to then become tools in the hands of God to shape us. But it is important to know the tactics of our enemy. It is important to understand that the devil is real and that he does secretly operate inside the lives of family members and friends around us in order to destroy us. With God's help, those destructive attempts at our life and at our spirituality can actually become great tools for the shaping of our character into that of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has this amazing ability to take things that are the very worst and turn them into the very best. I heard Zach one time ask an audience, what's the very worst thing that ever happened in the whole of the Bible? Quickly you conclude that it's the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And then he turns around and he says, and what's the very best thing that ever happened in the Bible? And there's a hush that goes over the audience before you begin to realize that it's the very same thing. It's the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has the ability to take whatever the devil can throw at us and turn it into the very best thing that's ever happened to us. That's an amazing evidence of a loving, faithful God who will never fail us. I can tell you the very worst thing that ever happened in my life was my divorce from my first wife. But the very best thing that ever happened in my life was that exact same divorce. Now, whether it made me bitter or better was largely dependent upon where I found my help from and how I went about finding God's help. A lot of people want God's help, but they're seeking Him in the wrong way. The key to finding God's help is to know God's heart. You have to know how God thinks and you have to know how God operates in order for you to align your thinking and ultimately your actions up with His. That's the only way we can get God's help. Sure, God makes room for ignorance. God makes room for the fact that we are sinful human beings. God makes room that we are hard-hearted and obstinate. But God also does demand, as it says in Philippians 2.10, there's a working out of that which He has already worked in. In Philippians 2.13, it says it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. But him working in is not independent of your working out. It's a secret to the Christian faith is to understand the balance between your part and God's part. So many people think, oh, Jesus did it all. Jesus did, it, did all the work and I just rest in the grace of Jesus and Jesus is my righteousness and Jesus paid the price and Jesus defeated the devil and I don't have to do anything. I'm going to tell you that's a defeated Christian. That's a, that's a Christian who's ignorant at best, blissfully going through life. And it's a very frustrated, disillusioned, defeated, discouraged Christian um, at best. The reality is God has a role and we have a role. We must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And the Bible says that God is near to all those who call on Him, to all of those who call on Him in truth. When we call upon the Lord God, if we don't see the Word the way He sees the Word, if we don't understand the doctrine the way He originally laid it out, because we've allowed some false teaching, some ignorance or some laziness on our part to distort our understanding of that discipline or rather that doctrine, 
then we can know God is not near those who call on him in falsehood. So the first thing we want to know is what is God's truth? What my experience has been is that God has taught me many things through experience and by the Spirit first, and then I've gone back to discover that that truth is in the Bible. It's an incredible thing to have God teach you something by His Spirit, the anointing that you've received if Christ Jesus is living inside of you, and then discover that that very thing that He's teaching you and bringing revelation to in your heart is something that exists in the Word of God from thousands of years ago. Another tremendous evidence of our amazing God. So here's basically what happened. When I was 19 years old, I met my first wife and I saw her as a challenge. She was very distant, emotionally unavailable, mentally unavailable, um, socially unavailable, and I was attracted to her by what she looked like on the outside. Mistake number one, God looks at the heart, man looks at the outside. And so I began to pursue her. And what I would realize years later, it was almost a game for me to try to figure out how I could get in her world. And I found her very mysterious because I I knew so little about her. That was how I was drawn in. Uh, Long story short, I ended up pursuing a relationship with her. Um, After two years of dating, we became married. The dating was a nightmare. equal part her responsibility and mine. We were young, we were incredibly naive. Um, Both of us called ourselves Christians. Neither one of us uh, were disciples of Christ. Neither one of us really knew God. We simply knew about Him. So we were two lost people calling ourselves by the name of Christ, getting ready to get ourselves in a world of trouble. The chaos in the first two years was unbelievable. I'm so embarrassed when I think back of some of the stupid things I did as a young person. Um, The first year of the marriage, I'm surprised we made it through. Um, I asked her to marry me after we had the biggest fight we'd ever had. And I just really believed in my 19-year-old mind, 19, 20 years old at the time, that if I married her, the fighting would stop. That was my human reasoning getting in the way. I can only imagine God looking down going, oh boy. (laughs) Not that he didn't know I was going to do this to begin with, but the marriage... The fact that it lasted as long as it did is a complete miracle to me. Um, I think I'm not a quitter. I'm not willing to quit on anything. I'll I'll, I'll go until there's nothing left. Um, And that was who I was. I was so weak as a young person. I wanted to be strong, self-sufficient. And I knew that, you know, the saying that said that winners never quit and quitters never win. And so I think I just had a tremendous amount of resolve to never give up. And then I had this legalistic understanding of divorce from God's perspective that I felt this sense of shame and condemnation and guilt that, man, if I ever failed in divorce, you know, that would be the end of me. And um, somehow or another, we overcame all of these obstacles, business failures, family issues, financial troubles, you know, love language differences. And we seemed to overcome whatever life threw at us and we would slowly get, you know, up and, and keep going. But the reality is, looking back, is that we swept the major issues always under the rug. We were never dealing with the root. We were always drowning in surface issues. And we would fix the surface issues, but the root problems were always there. And I began to chase, as we all do, the quote, good life. And we made many failures on the way to actually achieving it in 2007 when I had what I would reach my high point of what I considered I had reached the American dream. It was bigger than what I had ever thought. And we had all the money and the freedom and the kids in private school and the million dollar home and the three car garage full with motorcycles and toys and, you know, the freedom to kind of gum and go as we want. And I had a camera crew that would chase me around and I was doing business with, you know, um, speakers and trainers and larger, some Fortune 500 companies. And it seemed that I was the ultimate comeback kid. And behind the scenes, if you've watched my story, there was this growing sense of turbulence in my heart. I realized I was making progress, but it was like God was telling me I was headed in the wrong direction. And so I spent 18 months trying to do everything in my own power to get this business to fit back into my life rather than my life to fit into the business. I I wanted to know God and I, I wanted to know Him more and I loved Him more, but I was trapped in this chasing the lifestyle and desiring success I literally felt torn between my love for God and my love for success. It was a Matthew 6, 24 scenario where I was trying desperately to serve two masters and I I just couldn't. So at the end of this 18 month struggle, I surrender everything to God and I get on my knees. My marriage is starting to have tremendous troubles who are under a tremendous amount of condemnation and that there was a great deal of ignorance on God's true word as it relates to this subject of divorce and remarriage. 
I have a great deal of respect for a particular uh, teacher in India named Zach Poonin. He's an incredible Bible teacher. Um, I've been truly blessed. Hi, my name is Michael Criswell with Relentless Heart. And if you're a subscriber, you already know that. But I suspect this video will be viewed by more people than just those who are already subscribed. I want to speak on the topic of Christians and divorce. Recently, I received a plea from one of my subscribers who really felt that there were a lot of Christians that follow his teachings over the last couple of years. And um, I really respected something that Zach said about divorce. You know, in the culture of India, divorce is, is, is frowned upon greatly, and as it should be by all God-fearing people, albeit there's a different reason why they look down on divorce than what God's Word would have us look down on. I was wearing this 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 uh, invisible spiritual scarlet D, a divorced Christian, and I had been thinking for months now, I'm ruined. I'm a divorced Christian. God can never use me ever again. I've lost my whole witness for God. How did I, how did this happen to me? How did this happen to me? Honestly, I used to look down on divorced Christians until I became one. <laughs> 